why become a computer programmer, software engineer, or web developer by John Reed, or John the Programmer. So I'm going to talk to you about why you should get into this career field. I've worked in it for two years at Amazon, a little bit at Bank of America, and it was, first off, it's such a good paying job. At Amazon, I, I was working on the East Coast for 150 grand. At Bank of America, I was making $86 an hour. So the pay is fantastic. Um, and even if you don't manage to get the highest uh, paying positions, even if you get like an average position and end up making like 90 grand or 100 grand, that's still plenty of money. If you Google uh, pay and life happiness, it says Google says that the emotional well-being rose with income as expected to, but only to an annual salary of 75,000, 90,000 in today's money. So that's uh, what I got if I were to Google, sorry, let me, if I were to Google uh, pay and happiness, happiness, uh, higher salary, so you can look at any of these studies, but typically it'll say something like, like from the perfect salary to keeping up with the Joneses, here's how money really affects your happiness, and there's a perfect salary, uh, so uh, as so around 75000 in your, your 2000 money, uh, we've been having like 9% of year inflation, so a little bit more than that. According to the study, uh, this is in the United States, but according to the study, as you go above like 75,000 in 2000 money, or maybe like above 85,000, stress starts to go up. Uh, but when you start out as a programmer, you can make that much, and you can have your rent covered and your food covered and like whatever you need covered. Um, and then you don't have to worry as much. You don't have to worry about money. Personally, I never had to worry about money when I was working as a programmer, which was uh, really nice, which is why happiness goes up to that level. Uh, although uh, when you, some of the highest paying engineers get burnt out. So uh, it, so you can basically start out at around the amount of pay that where you would get ideal life happiness, or maybe you would get that after one or two years. So being a full stack JavaScript developer, developers make around that amount or above, maybe $100,000. I'm going to teach you to be a full stack JavaScript developer. Uh, if you have no college education, then it's better to uh, get, in, get in through being a QA engineer or a front end developer. QA engineers write tests, front end developers make the front end of the website, the, the graphical user interface, the design, the layout, the buttons, colors, the fonts, uh, the animations, those sorts of things. Um, it, you can make your own personal website, but typically you don't need any college education to be a front end developer. So that, uh, so I'll start by teaching you that, and then I'll teach you the back end stuff as well. But typically you need more experience, typically a bachelor's degree or maybe a couple years work experience to become a back end developer. Uh, I worked as a back end developer, but I had a bachelor's degree, and I was able to pass a, a back end coding test, which was like a like just a regular puzzle leap code style coding test. Um, so I'm going to teach you front end first. But uh, yeah, you, I, you get the ideal pay for life happiness. The second reason is you'll be in industries with the highest percentage of happy employees. So again, I think the purpose of life is happiness. And so getting becoming a programmer is a great way to get happiness in life if you like building websites or projects or apps or if you're into technology at all. So if you look at this website, it says that industries with the largest percentage of happy employers, information technology is at the top. If you look at this website, under 31 of the happiest jobs uh, with duties and salary information, uh, being a .NET developer was uh, at the top. So there's software engineer, uh, network engineer, .NET developer. .NET developer was at the top. So .NET is a C sharp programmer .NET is a uh, good, good environment where you, where the C sharp programming language is executed on. Uh, personally, I like C sharp. I think it uh, has more features than Java. So if you want to program backend in C sharp, I recommend it. Uh, there's lots of programming languages. I'm going to teach JavaScript uh, just because you can do both the front end and the back end in JavaScript. The back end is the business logic, the calculations. Maybe you can do like like processing, database storage, and the back end. Uh, but yeah, so that's in the highest paying jobs. And then if you look at Glassdoor's uh, 50 best jobs in America, the tech jobs like enterprise architect, full stack engineer, uh, DevOps engineer, machine learning engineer, data engineer are all in the top. So these are all your type tech jobs. Java developer, backend engineer are all um, some of the, some 
all in the 50, 50 best jobs in America for 2022. So first I'm gonna teach you a front end engineer. So that pays a little bit less. You're seeing 81,000 instead of like back end engineer, which is 112,000. But you don't need as much experience to become a front end engineer typically uh, or a front end engineer or like a uh, or a UX designer, which does like layouts and design and uh, picture and colors and fonts and buttons and things like that. So you don't need as much experience or you don't need a college education to become a front end engineer. So I'll teach you that first uh, by teaching you HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, then you'll, you'll need a, a front end framework, either like React or Vue.js. Uh, to be a front-end engineer and then you can do some personal projects some websites and get your first front-end engineer job but uh it that that's in the tech jobs that are uh, those are some of the best jobs so people get good pay uh when i worked at amazon i only worked eight hours a day never more i had a great uh, work environment we had video games in the break room we had uh we got out an hour early on fridays there was beer and board games on Fridays after work. Uh, at Amazon, like those big tech companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google have a very uh, programmer-centric culture, so they treat us well. Highly recommend it uh, if you can pass a coding test like Lead Code. All right, and then the next reason is uh, job demand. So the first tech job is the hardest to get. Typically, if you're getting going to college, you'll need an internship. If you've got you're in a, just an associate's degree, two years, or if you, you're not majoring in computer science, you can do this uh, thing called Revature, which uh, provides entry-level tech work for $25 an hour. You sign a two-year contract, you work for $25 an hour anywhere in the US for two years. Uh, and then after that, you have your experience and you can get that $100,000 a year full-time position uh, without Revature anymore, so you can leave after two years. So that gives you experience. You can uh, contribute op to open source projects. So for example, if you go on GitHub, you can go, so that's the project that I made, but for example, you can contribute to like, uh, you can contribute to Vue.js, which is a front end framework, or you can contribute, the code is here on GitHub. So you can contribute to that, or you can contribute to like React, for example. Also, a very popular front-end framework. Uh, there are there are issues like bugs that need to be fixed, so you can learn the code base. Uh, maybe get someone to help you tell you where in the code base the bug needs to be fixed at, um, and then you can you can do the bug fix, submit it, and then you can say, oh, and then you can say, like, I'm a I'm a code committer for the React code base. I fixed the bugs. So that's a good way to get experience and to practice learning your code base and contributing. Uh, you can make personal projects. I've made a couple of personal projects myself. Uh, for example, uh, I, you can, um, if you pass a company's coding tests, uh, so for example, Google has a pretty difficult coding test. You have to solve this coding puzzle. Uh, big tech companies like uh, Amazon and Facebook have half coding tests, half behavioral, where they talk about your like work history. If you don't have any work history, you might want to talk about like personal project you worked on or maybe you work on a group project with someone else. Or maybe you can Google like, for example, uh, volunteer coding work. You can find something like uh, donate code or something like that where you can do volunteer coding work. It helps if you can find a mentor because typically you don't know what you're doing at first. Uh, and uh, you can also do freelance work. So for example, uh, you can find freelance work on Upwork. And on Upwork, you can uh, do development IT work. You can find something, you can find like build a website for someone. Uh, starting out, you can say like, I'll do it, I'll do it just for the experience or for the, um, just for the uh, re re referral. So you can, if you can get good websites to put on your resume, uh, you can get good referrals, then you can give the phone number and the email of the person who you built the website for to your prospective employer. And then they can call them and say like, oh, is this guy good? And they'll say, oh, he's great, whatever. And then you can get that job. So it's really yeah, the first programming job is the hardest because you have to convince them that you can do the work, that you're worth hiring. 
but then after that, you you build a LinkedIn, you put your web your resume on some job boards like Monster, Indeed, Dice, and then recruiters, tech recruiters who are who get a percentage of your of the first year's income, will uh, will reach out to you on these job boards like Indeed, Dice, and they will find your email and your phone, and they'll call you and email you and say like, hey, we've got this job uh, which matches up with your skills. And then from there, it's, uh, once you get the experience, once you get your first job, it's much easier to get follow-up jobs. Uh, one thing that you should be careful for is um, your your jobs will set you on a, a track. So, for example, you might get into the front-end track or the back-end track or the DevOps track. And then once you, you're in a track, it's uh, a lot harder to get something that's outside of that track. So, for example, let's say you start out with like C Sharp or something, or like Node.js. Once you have Node.js, it's easier to keep on doing Node.js jobs. Um, but let's say you say, oh, I want to switch to C Sharp. Uh, you have to convince them that you can do the work, that you know C Sharp, that you've done like a project with C Sharp, you've done open source contributions with C Sharp, maybe you've done some, some uh, Upwork on uh, some bug fix or something on Upwork on C Sharp, but uh, it's hard. It's harder to switch uh, specialties or uh, skill sets. Uh, a programming language itself isn't really like a specialty. Typically, a specialty would be like big data or quality assurance or front end or back end APIs. Uh, but once you get into a specialty, it gets kind of harder to switch specialties. Um, so trying to be careful on what specialty you want to get into based on like your personal preference. So maybe you have a, maybe like if you're a kind of artsy designy kind of person, you can make good layouts. You have a good eye for aesthetics. You might want to stay in, in front end. Uh, although even if, even if you don't, you might want to start out at front end just because it's easier to get a job in front end than it is in back end if you don't have much experience. Uh, if you, uh, like to mess around with things and break things, you might want to stick to quality assurance. If you like uh, logic, you might want to be in the the back end, the database. If or, sorry, the back end. If you are good with data storage, if you really like MySQL or MongoDB or Cassandra, you might want to become a database expert. Uh, so pick your, be a little bit careful with your specialty, just because that'll kind of set you on a track, and it'll be kind of hard to get off of that track. Um, also, be careful with like really rare technologies. So, for example, at Bank of America, I worked in Scala, which is a really rarely used programming language. And then once I was in that, it was kind of hard to find things that were outside of Scala because, like, I was like, oh, that's like one of my favorite programming language and what I worked in last. Typically, when people are hiring you, they look at what job you did last when hiring you for this job. So, uh, Try to avoid like super rarely used technologies because it'll limit the number of jobs that you can ap apply to uh, because typically they'll kind of search for common technologies when they're doing searches. Okay. Uh, and then another benefit of being a programmer is you get to work from home. So uh, typically you don't start out working from home. Uh, when I was in my first real programming job at Amazon, I needed a lot of help. Oftentimes I would go to a, the more experienced programmer's desk to ask them questions or to bug them or to get help from them. Or I would look over their shoulder or they would look over my shoulder at my computer. Uh, so get, being able to kind of bug people in person is helpful uh, at getting their attention. So personally, I found that uh, to be a helpful aspect of being in person. Uh, also, if you don't know what you're doing, it's kind of harder to do that and, and to be remote. Uh, whereas if you're in person and you don't know what you're doing, people can help you more readily. Uh, so I don't recommend starting out remote. And typically when you get your first job, they won't hire you remote. But once you're more experienced, uh, you can work remotely and that's not an issue. Uh, typically, if you're working remote, you just have to check in with one of your other coworkers and say, like, "Hey, I'm 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 currently working on this uh, in the middle of the day," and then you'll have your daily meeting, your like stand up where you say what you did yesterday, what you plan on doing today. Uh, every day, it's called a stand up meeting. Typically, that's done as part of agile programming, which is like the standard programming practice. But typically, as you get more experience, uh, when you know what you're doing and you're able to work independently, that's when you get to do, uh, work remote. Uh, some companies don't like remote work. For example, Google doesn't like remote work. Uh, Google wants people to work at least part, like part-time 
few days a week from home, few days a week at the office, even like after the coronavirus. Uh, whereas other companies like Twitter uh, allow uh, indefinite uh, full-time remote work. It depends on the company. It also depends on your personal preference. But uh, in a in in the pan the age of the pandemic, it's nice being able to work remote. And when the pandemic became went full swing, everyone was forced to work remote. So uh, yeah, that's a benefit. Some people really like remote work, and you get to do remote work. Uh, at least some sometimes you get to do remote work as a programmer, and you don't get fired because of an inability to do work remote. Whereas like I remember in restaurants, waiters, it's like well, you can't be a waiter remotely. You have to they just fire you. Whereas the programmer, if there's like a new outbreak of virus or a new variant or something, they'll say okay, everyone just switch to being remote and then just work from home, uh, which is uh, nice. It's an office job. And then the last reason is because having technical skills is useful. You get to build cool stuff. For example, I built this website for my mom's uh, apartment complex. Uh, she uh, is the president of this apartment complex and uh, Sierra Towers and people in this apartment complex wanted to be able to rent their apartment to directly to customers. So they would be, customers were able to put in how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, the dates of availability, search for it, pull up their apartment, look at photos of the apartment that they posted on Google Drive, uh, and look up how much the rent is, and if it's available, if it's for sale, and contact the landlord either by calling them, looking up the description, or emailing them. Uh, so I created all this functionality. You can create an account, you can update the availability, you can update the uh, listing, all from this website that I created. Uh, so it's nice being able to build websites. It's a useful skill to have, even if it's just for like a family member or a friend or for yourself making a personal website. I also one time for my bachelor's degree, I was working on a project where we made a game. So the code for this game is here. It's a um, it's a multiplayer online role playing game. So there's sound effects. Uh, there's so the model is like the the um, there's also, for example, there's avatar, drawable thing, entity. So these are like the different Smasher, Summoner, Sneak are the kind of character things that you can play as. So the game is here. You uh, run the main method. Uh, then the game pops up. Choose a class, Smasher, Summoner, Sneak, uh, capital Z for Smasher. And then you can move around with the arrow keys and the little X on the center. The graphics are terrible. Uh, Oh, I can change, uh, I can switch between the uh, Smasher, Summoner, and Sneak. Uh, well, anyway, the game is terrible. Uh, the graphics are terrible. Uh, but all the functionality is there. Like, you can be, change classes, you can get items, you can attack things. Uh, the game is terrible, but it was fun to build, and it was a nice group project. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's fun to be able to build things. I remember this morning... I was like, I'm in the mood to build like a chess AI. Like, I wanted to create a website where we can go to this website and you can play chess against an AI and it'll like calculate like all the possible moves and pick the best move and you can choose a difficulty, like how many moves ahead you want the chess AI to look when you're playing against it, like one move ahead, uh, pick the best move or two moves ahead or three moves ahead, look ahead. And I realized that's something that I could build. And I thought like, oh, using like I could make a queue and then I could put all the different like moves on the queue and I could like iterate through all the possible moves and I could have a formula to calculate how good a move is compared to other moves, like based on like uh, how many positions are open or something like that. So uh, being able to build projects is cool. And um, I remember like personally, I was into video games as a kid. And then in college, I took my first coding class and then I made a coding project for fun. So if you enjoy uh, making websites or coding projects for fun, or if, or if you're tech savvy, it's definitely a good field to get into. And also, if you have a business and you want to automate things, you can, instead of having to put everything into an Excel spreadsheet manually, instead of having to manually enter things into like QuickBooks on the on the web app, you can create a program that does things automatically for you, that automatically uses APIs to like automatically access your QuickBooks from the web app, like from your computer program, programmatic access via APIs. Or you can make a program that um, modifies or accesses your Excel spreadsheets uh, using you could use like C Sharp or Visual Basic um, to maybe access your Word doc, your Word spreadsheets, 
Uh, so it's a good skill to have. There's a lot that you can do with it, and there's a lot of, like I mentioned, there's a lot of specialties you can go into, whether the specialty is, um, you know, like front-end, back-end, databases, uh, machine learning, if you're into statistics, uh, if you, um, and like if you if you have a good math, math background with like linear algebra and statistics, you can do machine learning. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of specialties you can go into. It's a useful skill to have. Um, if you want to become a programmer, I'd be happy to help you. I created this email, programmingteacherjohn at gmail.com, which you can reach out to me and I can mentor you. I can give you advice. I can kind of motivate you. I can give you resources. Um, there's also... Uh, there's also, oh, and here you can see computer engineering is the highest uh, paying major. Computer science is like the fifth highest paying major. The reason computer engineering pays more than computer science isn't because they do different jobs. Typically, both computer engineering and computer science would work as programmers. But computer engineering have stronger math background. And with the stronger math background, you can pass the coding puzzles because they're like mathematical thinking. You can pass those coding puzzles and get into those companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook uh, with your engineering skills and uh, you can get paid more that way. Uh, one second. So in addition to emailing me and getting uh, help from me, you can try, uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Give me one second. You can try, uh, am I back? Yeah. So you can try this thing called Dev Slopes, which um, they give you a full select academy, but they also provide you a mentor who you can reach out to and get help from. Uh, there's also uh, there's another also stuff that you can do. You can use um, there's free code camp. So if you do um, if you Google like free code camp, you can go through the free code camp and get certifications uh, through the free code camp, uh, and it'll give you assignments and tutorials that you can go through. Uh, and then once you have the skills, you can start uh, doing little projects on Upwork. To, um, but yeah, it's a great field to go into. Uh, for my next video, I will talk about. Uh, so in my next video, I'll talk about the skill, uh, the things that you have to learn to become a professional programmer. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, tools that you need to learn, like HTML, JavaScript, uh, HTML, JavaScript, CSS. Node, uh, GitHub, whatever, and so I'll cover those um, the skills that you'll need to learn um, to become a developer, and uh, in in the next video. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Again, uh, if you need a mentor, just email me at programmingteacherjohn@gmail.com, and I'll help you out. Bye.